Hi folks. Now that North Rim of the Grand Canyon picture obviously has absolutely nothing to do with the English novel or with Daniel Defoe. As for that English novel though, hey, it's something brand new in writing, or at least we continue consider it as such. Well, Yes, we're beginning the 18th century and literacy is reaching a kind of tipping point here in the 1700s. That means enough people can read. that There is a real market for literature, which includes a market for prose stories. Stories aimed at middle class readers can do well. Stories aimed at women, yes, Women who can read and write. Women, other than that precious few that uh, people go digging for to add a female voice or two to this early British literature because, hey, so many of them just did not have the chance to learn to read and write. <coughs> Excuse me. Now they are reading and writing. Yes, come the end of this century, we're going to have someone writing novels very, very oriented toward women, focused on women and all the rest. One of the finest English stylists writing very mature novels, that being Jane Austen. Here we're in the beginnings. Our novels are going to look a little bit different than that. But uh, let's talk about what a novel is. Good general definition, book length, that's 30,000 plus words, work of prose fiction, that word is fiction. A true story is not a novel. Any book is not a novel. A novel is a work of fiction. With a continuous plot, a collection of short stories is not a novel, or unified by its focus on a central character, Yes, I said a collection of short stories isn't, but a collection of adventures centering around some picaresque hero is. Now, this thing with definitions, warning, this definition fails to include some 20th century experimental fiction and the like of that. And it seems to include oh, items every here and there that uh, I would kind of scowl at and say, oh, that's not a novel, or at least we don't call it one. We'll live with that. That's just the way it goes. The first work that we normally term a novel is Spanish writer Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. Well, a little in class, we'll spend a bit of time with uh, a couple scenes from that because we have an excellent translation from Tobias Smollett one of our 18th century writers, one of the people we care about in those regards. Daniel Defoe is the man usually credited with producing the first English language novel, that being Robinson Crusoe, the book about a man marooned on an island following a shipwreck and all by himself, based loosely on the adventures of Andrew Selkirk, a pirate who was marooned on a desert island and uh, lived there by himself for a couple years before being rescued by Woods Rogers. Now, there were prose books written before Robinson Crusoe. A variety of things we term romances. Cervantes satirizes European romances with his Don Quixote. And we would think of uh, Mallory's Mort, Ar Mort D'Arthur that we looked at as one of these, but we don't call them novels. Now, many of those early novels were a type we term picaresque. Picaresque novel, piece written as a series of bold adventures. The unifying element is the protagonist as we have the protagonist's life, or some big old chunk of it, offered as a series of adventures. 
protagonists often, oh, just a bit disreputable. Now, Ma Flanders is downright nasty. He's a thief and an amateur prostitute and several other nasty things. Tom Jones from Henry Fielding. Well, Tom Jones is a nice kid. But this, yes, nice kid who uh, involves himself in all sorts of things that are sometimes questionable. Tobias Smollett's uh, heroes are heroes because he's the focus point, the focal point. His heroes do this and that as they swashbuckle their way through the world. The substance usually a mix of adventure and satire. Our major early writers, let's mention Defoe first, obviously, with Robinson Crusoe, Maul Flanders, and some others. Henry Fielding, satirist, was also a playwright, wrote satire Shamala. His masterwork is Tom Jones' picaresque novel. Jonathan Wilde, we may look at a few excerpts from that. It's a picaresque satire, those among others. Samuel Richardson wrote a couple curious epistolary novels, epistolary, a novel written as a series of letters. Pamela and Clarissa Harlow. Then Tobias Smollett, whose name I already mentioned, Yes, the model of adventure writing with his Roderick Random, Humphrey Clinker, Peregrine Pickle, and his translation of uh, Don Quixote. Genre writing? Yes, it showed up too. I'm not naming the, uh, the first Gothic, but naming the two writers probably worthy of memory, that is, we can bear to read their stuff, uh, this being Matthew Monk Lewis, wrote The Monk and uh, made himself, oh yes, quite a publicist for himself, and uh, Anne Radcliffe, with a number of Gothics, following that Gothic form and formula. Now let's talk a little bit about Defoe, as Defoe wrote novels, essays, pamphlets, all sorts of things, and we're going to look at a little bit of his stuff. Um, specifically, we're going to look at his History of the Pirates, which, well, he was probably the author, as he uh, wrote this under a pseudonym under the name Captain Charles Johnson, and folks aren't quite sure about it and argue about it, but I'm going to accept that he was partly for my own convenience here. But uh, that book is the basis of most of the accounts of pirates. You read stories of the Caribbean pirates, Blackbeard and Bart Roberts and people like that. Oh, where did the writers of these things start? They read Defoe, read History of the Pirates. Material in this is mostly true, or at least it's accepted history. We'll get a little messy on some of that, but yes, these folks were real people. Real people, including Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. So we're going to, uh, oh, in class, we look at them a fair little bit because they had a very, very curious story. Jack Rackham, pirate, at one point took the, uh, yes, took amnesty from Woods Rogers settled himself down in Jamaica, decided settling down was just no fun at all, and uh, joined by a few of his friends. They joined on the crew of a fishing boat, promptly seized it and took to sea and continued their little uh, spree of piracy. Now, think of pirate vessels and no, no women on board and such as that. Well, Jack Rackham sailed with two of them. One was his girlfriend, Anne Bonny. She was a Jamaica character, a full-scale wild woman, background thief, prostitute, what have you, and such. And then there was Mary Reed, who Bonny probably met in Jamaica. Defoe offers this story of her just happening to be in Rackham's uh, 
crew, that's a little bit hard to believe, but we won't worry about it. She was a very interesting sort as it's a young woman whose mother, she was a grass widow, mother found it very financially convenient to pretend that she was a boy. Now, Mary Reed liked this idea because it opened quite a few opportunities not available to young women. She enlisted in the army and served for a few years. Um, she and her tent mate fell in love. Yes, he is, her tent mate was a he and she is a she and uh, all of this stuff. So they married, left the service, opened an inn, and then he died. The inn went under financially, so she had to find something to do. So she went to sea. Ended up in Jamaica and there decided she was willing to go to sea with uh, Jack Rackham and join that crew of piracy, presumably talked into it by Anne Bonney under whatever circumstances. Now, Defoe liked to write about women. We know this. Why? Partly for the titillating elements, I do suspect you will too. It's obvious. Fictional Maul Flanders, Thief, Amateur Prostitute, Fictional Roxanne, Professional, yes, she was a, a courtesan, and, and when things went bad, a streetwalker, prostitute. Um, and Bonnie, real and historical, and her whole life, or at least as much as we know about it, because after... She was apprehended and managed to avoid the gallows for piracy. She made her life a little more quiet, but we would uh, term it, shall we say, an ethically challenged life. Now, Mary Reed, moral, upright, and all of these things, but uh, doing things a young woman normally didn't do. That is, she was going about dressed as a young man and was a soldier and a sailor and a pirate, for goodness sakes. She fought a duel as a pirate because someone insulted her boyfriend. They married, jumped the broom on the, the pirate vessel, but at any rate, she was better with a sword than he was, so she went after the... Uh, the uh, unfortunate man who uh, insulted uh, her friend. Unfortunate man because she did him in. She knew what she was doing with that sword. So, but at any rate, we've got that from Defoe. We also have his definite intention to appeal to female audiences. Hey, we have literate females here. We have women reading these things. They're reading these things that Victorians would say were not fit for women and children. We're a few years shy of uh, Jane Austen's uh, drawing room fair as, yes, we don't have the sophistication of Jane Austen or Sir Walter Scott's uh, uh, plotting. We don't have that fine and defined quality yet. Let's be honest, we don't. But we do have novels, and they have readers. And we would also term Defoe within the standards of the time. Pay attention to my saying within the standards of the time or considering the standards of the time. Just a bit of a feminist in that he recognized how women were exploited, mistreated, shoved sometimes into these rather undesirable lives. After all, Ma Flanders does not uh, begin by being a, a moral reprobate. She begins by being seduced. Seduced and uh, finding herself, oh yes, being treated as a sex object in the full style of the 18th century. But that gives us a little clue on Defoe and our very basic background on the novel. Novel that is going to come to full fruit in the 19th century, 
with uh, Dickens and George Eliot and all sorts of other people. Or maybe coming to fruit just a little bit before that with the fantastic writing of Jane Austen, who is right at the cusp of our period here and into that 19th century. 